Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play The Sexy Brutale. We, after encountering the man in the golden mask again and the king in red, wind up back at the elevator at the foot of the basement, and we aren't left with many leads to follow. There is one thing, though. We never fully explored that garden area. It's the one part of the mansion that we haven't really investigated to its fullest. I thought we got this already. Oh well, no harm opening it again. Oh yeah, we got the um, the playing card inside, so it's still locked every time we reset time. It's just there's nothing in it anymore. Uh, and how we get back to that garden area is going to be through uh, the shortcut back up to the bar. Now, sometimes things are a little bit hitchy in the transition between rooms. Because the game is loading each room as you go through the door, I think. Uh, and this will take us... Oh, looks like Aurum is here. Yep, whoops. We're gonna have to wait a second for him to uh, go into the statue room past the ghost guard. Looks like he's in that room now, but we're still getting the glowing red warning. Yep, he looks like uh, we had to wait for the door to close. And then over to the left is the room with the big stained glass window that we uh, that we broke to get out into the gardens. We'll just have to re-break that. The only other new thing that we have is the Sapphire Tear Ring, which may actually come in handy. So in an hour or two is when uh, that body is going to fall from whatever height. We still haven't actually discovered that or whose body that was. But we have one person left to save. So we might be finding out sooner rather than later. It's just calm and serene and tranquil out here. And through the arches and through the gates, there is a, a simple cabin out back. If we spy in, there's a pregnant woman with long, flowing red hair and an empty carriage. We can use the blue tearstone ring here, the Marquis's signet, and that will actually let us into the cabin. We, we could always peer through the keyhole and see that sight inside, but we would never be able to enter the cabin without that signet ring. But now that we've entered, we're back at the start of the mansion, and everything is on fire. Also, we get no chiming animation because once we're once we step inside, this is where we're locked to. So you can use the pocket watch on the clock inside, but you're already set to that one, bound to it. But now we have a kind of bigger fish to fry. This space just got really impossible. But from here, it's kind of linear because... There's usually only one entrance each time you enter a new room that you can go to, so you're being railroaded through the burning mansion. And in this case, there's a clock in this room that we are going to bind ourselves to and reset once again because we've already wasted nearly an hour just getting to that room. And there are no other ways to go except backwards, unless you restart the day from 12. And you have just enough time if you start from this room to go through the north door before this room combusts into flames. And that leads us back to the bar, which means we can take this left again and get back to the room with the stained glass. 
and back to the gardens again. This time, the gardens are not so tranquil. The flames have spread out here. They're not quite lapping at the cabin just yet. But the fire's still spreading, right? Oh god, I'm muted. My mic to take a sip of water while who? Ha ha. Well, I walk out here and uh, forgot I left the top off, lifted up, and splashed water all over myself. Sounds like what everyone in the sexy brutal could use right now, though, is some water. Oh, it's cold. Well, the second attempt at entering the cabin leads us here. Would you talk to Lucas? Something's been troubling him. He's always looked up to you, you know? I know he teases you dreadfully about your lifestyle. Remember, Boone is a priest. Used to be a gambling addict. But he respects you enormously, more than anyone else I know. I believe he's always wanted to be more like you. Perhaps when he's a little older. Or more mature, I should say. Oh, you have a ring. Can I see? Yeah, the blue tearstone ring. Now becomes the ruby heart ring. Must take it. Lucas will be missing it, I'm sure. Tell him I just needed a rest. This little guy is heavy. Hope he won't be mad missing the party. Know he loves the mansion, but this is all we've ever really needed. Yeah, this rustic, simple cabin in the woods. Eh, not that simple. Still pretty ornate. <laughs> Still pretty well furnished. But, hey, compared to uh, the sexy, brutal casino mansion out there. And as Eleanor leaves, yes, that was Eleanor, the wife of the Marquis. She's always here, safe in this place. You've seen some of the truth now. The mansion was on fire. We, the guests, died. It should have ended there. But the creature in the golden mask, somehow he brought them all back, torturing us over and over. I try to help them try to find some peace in all this pain. He's so, so strong. But with that ring, I believe you can stop him. Remember what the password is uh, that you use in the bar. It's Eleanor. Uh, she lets slip that uh, Reginald Sixpence is her uncle, by the way. Eleanor left her mask for you. Take it. And I think at this point, it's pretty clear who the bloodied woman is. But we still have some secrets left to divulge. And we get the mirror walk, the same ability that we have been seeing the servants use to slip between the mirrors. Mask allows you to travel by stepping into the mirrors. She always tried so hard to see the best in people, but it's what you see that will matter. Now look into the mirror. She assumes the same position that Eleanor was in, except this time, crying. And we're back here with the king in red. Never seen inside that place, you know. I'm not sure whether to rage impotently or just be quietly glad. Anyway, I've watched you, Lafcadio. Your arrival was somewhat unexpected. Lafcadio in scare quotes. You've done your dutiful loop. And all of a sudden, one day, you're running around, ruining everything. 
took me a little while to figure it out. Sure, she spun all the tales about me and what's happening here. Sure, they left out some rather important information. I'll be utterly candid with you now, Boone. I could end this right now. I could end you. I have the power. Perhaps she's right and I am a monster. But we might all be monsters here. I want you to see, to understand. Now we'll be following the man in the golden skull mask. Around each in every one of the murder scenes. By the way, if you look carefully during a playthrough, you can occasionally spot him randomly popping up as you enter a room. He will always be just leaving and you can never really properly trail him. It wasn't my finger that pulled the trigger, but it was my command. He makes no... Mm, he makes no bones about being a murderer. Dear friend Clay, in this scenario I had him die from a shot of venom from the same spider which would go on to devour his precious wife. He did like a drink, Clay, but never when he was working, you know? There's some poetry in that. And uh, we didn't actually check on, on Reginald back there. The poison burned the flesh around Clay's mouth down to the bone. Horrific way to die, and also Reginald's uh, mechanical uh, dealer. So we don't get too much from doing that. And then Trinity up here, the moth by moonlight, is what Clay called her. She loved that name. A moth, so I thought it very fitting for her to be eaten by my giant spider. I never had one, you know, I'm sure nothing could possibly grow this big. But by gods, I wish they did. I would have kept it in a room just like this one. So the spider wasn't something that he had in life. But in this mansion, in this space, where he is the engineer and the architect and the god of this place, he can have whatever he wants. Speaking of things that he didn't necessarily have in life... Remember our friend Grinmaw? This one was rather fantastical. When we found that fish, I did so want to believe. Rather suspect it was just a guppy with some particularly bright colors. The man who sold it to him thought he was so gullible, but I wasn't paying for the fish, I was paying for the story. Eleanor called me a fool, but she did love to watch him in his tank. Best fortune I ever spent. I like to say that Willow could never have hanged herself, but then a long time ago I stopped even trying to pretend I could understand what another person might do. So the murders that he orchestrated, they're not just poetic, they're thematic. Uh, my favorite one being the murder of Clay. Somebody pointed this out in a thread that I read like early last year. Uh, Clay's negligence, fueled by his addiction, is what leads to the death of his lover. And that should sound pretty appropriate, along with being poetic. Poetic in a really macabre way, but still. That and Grinmaw being a red fish. Not a red herring specifically, but close enough. A red angler fish. It's one of my favorite things. He bought it for the, uh, the story, not the reality of it. And it turned out to be valuable in setting up this looping torture chamber of a mansion full of these poetically just deaths. Or unjust, depending on how you see it. Oh, and perhaps he'll change it so that uh, Grayson has to watch uh, Red Rockridge die first. Or the other way around, rather. <laughs> Red has to watch Grayson die first. Or am I smelting him down in a furnace like a big gold bar? Oh, that's one of my favorite descriptions in this, in this whole game. Oh, man. I like to think that if Aram were capable, were able to choose how we went, then perhaps he would have chosen something like this. Though in a way, he almost did. And remember the Burning Mansion? Well, Aram and uh, Thanos did die in a fire. It's a small hope that his heart gave out before he burned to death.
And finally, Thanos. What a mind to waste. Oh yeah, he he was a grouchy and often tiresome old man. But that mind is like a cracked diamond. Mm. As I said, I am a murderer. This is not a brag or a boast. I'm not good or clever for it. Oh, yes. There is one person who did not die. We know this. There was an empty grave. Remember with a flower puzzle? And this room, which we never really made a big stink about. One man who survived the events of the day here. Who woke up in a broken body with a broken mind. They put a mask on his face and a machine forced him to breathe until he was fit to stand. The mask is a breathing aid. Who are the staff here? A man who, quote, served his time, but time that could never be enough. Yeah, the room with the prison. Mmm, whoever was in this cell, they must have been here for years and years. And the graveyard. A man who lived when all the others did not. I would like you to meet that man, Boone. Would like you to meet him and then decide if this day should end. These are all the rooms that powered the room leading to the King in Red, by the way. And the crypt is marked Lucas. It is empty. Lucas, the Marquis of the Sexy Brutal, lived where all the guests in the mansion and his wife Eleanor and their unborn child died. Presumably, from what we saw before, in some kind of fire. And the man in the golden mask believes that Lucas deserves this, this punishment. We're gonna head somewhere now, where before we took the heaven and hell room, uh, the elevator down to the basement will now take the staircase up to the chapel. In a kind of roundabout way, mind you. Uh, we'll use the red ring here and disperse the flames, the blue flames around this door. So the implication is that Lucas caused the fire that killed everybody in the mansion. And the man in the golden mask is, in a poetic way, recreating the deaths of all of Lucas's friends and showing the, uh, uh, showing the king in red, Lucas, those deaths over and over on a loop. This Saturday, where, all, where he killed all of his friends over and over and over again. So you know how we tried to enter the cabin and wound up in the burning mansion? Well, in that case, that's exactly how things ended up for Lucas. Tried to grasp at this peaceful, well-off life for his family and wound up burning his casino down and killing everybody he loved, including them. We still have a little bit left to learn, though. So by now, you can pretty safely guess that Eleanor is the bloody woman. We know the uh, the king in red is Lucas. And the man in the golden skull mask also appears to be some aspect of Lucas. But we're still missing maybe a few pieces. Maybe just a few. Like, why? Why? Or how did he set the fire in the first place?
The man in the golden mask calls himself a murderer. Maybe it was murder. This is Lucas Bonds, the Marquis of the Sexy Brutale. That's not the king in red, that's not the man in the golden mask. That is Lucas himself. Brought us all here to judge this man. Or rather, to sentence him. His guilt is not in question. And fittingly, this is all taking place at the top of the clock tower. What with time and clocks being such a, a heavy motif in this game. If Sixpence's calculations after... Or it's their Sixpence's uh, calculations. The explosives are primed, a garden full of my guests safely outside by then, and a garden full of witnesses to clear me of any wrongdoing. It's risky. But the insurance, it's a new life for Eleanor and I. Something a little less extravagant this time. Yeah, they, uh... The Sexy Brutal is a huge, huge cost to invest in. It's not exactly bringing Lucas a lot of money, uh, but it is a lot to maintain. And on top of that, Lucas was, uh, a gambler, a compulsive, addicted one. Sixpence... I'm afraid. Huh. You've been not you you ah, you'd have done a much neater job. Eleanor turns away. The bloodied woman, I should say. This is what is right. So Lucas set a bomb, or a series of bombs around the mansion to go off and burn the place down. So they could claim the insurance money and start a new life, a simpler, well-off life, with Eleanor and their, uh, their baby on the way. We were also a gamble. This house is now always winning, and you are a luxury I can no longer afford. It's time to cash in the check. But, things did not go as Lucas planned. The bombs around the mansion are going off too early. The guests were all supposed to be outside in the gardens by now. He mistimed all of them. And now there's no way out from the clock tower. Except... body that fell in the gardens, the glass breaking, now we know that body is Lucas's, jumping out of the clock tower. And he lived. He lived and he does not feel like he deserved to live. He is, uh, maybe a well-earned sense of survivor's guilt here. They died in the fire this man set. Kept this mansion running, embellished the deaths, added some flair, but this is the man truly responsible for the deaths in this mansion. If you can figure out if you wish to save this man, then go ahead, I will not stop you. So the respirators on the servants and the king in red being kept alive, or being kept on this life support system? Oh, I got way too uh, over eager. I have to wait. Uh, we have one more puzzle to solve. All that stuff is connected. The servants are an extension of Lucas slash uh, the man in the golden mask. 
That's why they share that characteristic. Also, the time loop. This thing that we've been using and, and seeing all throughout serves a secondary thematic purpose. Not only is the time loop this eternal reminder of what Lucas lost and what he cost himself through fault that's that firmly rests at his feet, time and clocks being a major component of the game reinforces the mistake with the timers on the bombs. Also, remember, Lucas is a gambler. He does these things for the thrill. There are less convoluted ways of, of setting himself up for life. He wanted the excitement of this insurance scam plan, I think. He could have taken fewer risks, but that's not Lucas. So, maybe the man in the golden mask has a point. A pretty good one at that. Lucas did a lot wrong here. But here's the thing. Remember how there's that room with the cell in it? After Lucas was healthy enough to walk around to get up and, and live without uh, being on life support, he did go to jail. He went to jail for a long, long time. But he still has to live with that guilt, and he still killed all of the people in his mansion chasing an insurance scam. Everyone, all of his friends, all the guests, all of that potential that his guests had, their brilliant minds and capabilities, and his wife and unborn child. That's still all his fault. And so that replica of the sexy brutal denotes that all the bombs were hidden around the fireplaces throughout the mansion. Uh, we are going to use arms wire cutters now and cut the, the wires on the bomb. Wait, this isn't right. The timer. I made a mistake. This would have gone off early. Only after realizing the wires cut does he realize what the bombs would have done. But this, the point isn't to go back in time to fix his mistake and absolve him of this guilt. We aren't doing that. We aren't traveling back in time. We are in a time loop in a memory constructed by Lucas, the man in the golden mask. I should have told you, but you can be rather proper, no? I'm going to burn this place down. You know I love this place, it's everything, but I love her more. We have a child on the way. In this mansion, the cost, the sheer drain of it. I'm not the young, reckless gambler I used to be, Laffy. I thought you'd be proud. I've locked those demons up tight, no more chasing the high stakes for me, and yet he still is. I will admit this plan is somewhat thrilling, but I timed it so that everything will detonate once ever unsafely outside. That's the darndest thing. His wire here was cut, and I've, and I've just noticed a rather terrible mistake. Everything would have gone off early. He never meant it, but he still did it. Hmm. He did not intend, but he acted, and they died. They all died. He killed them, Boone. He killed everyone he ever cared about, his friends, his own wife, his unborn child. He, we don't deserve to be forgiven. They don't deserve to be forgotten. This is how I keep them alive. This party, this day. I keep the agony fresh, I see their faces, I remember them. She would have us forgive ourselves. She would let us go, she would have you live. But I am not ready, I will never be ready. Please, Boone.
everything you see in this mansion, it's the memory of a broken man. Believing the nightmare of the night he murdered everyone dear to him, one terrible act that he is that he wished he could have taken back every second of his life. We finally see Lucas, who is front and center, by the way, in all the key art. We, we finally see him unmasked. And same for the man in the golden mask, who we've long since known slash guessed by now is Lucas. There is that final twist, though. Lafcadio Boone is also an aspect of Lucas. Maybe an older, wiser, more mature Lucas? Who's lived with this guild, who has seen this agony, faced this fresh torment each and every day? And then, like, we were up there judging Lucas uh, from the balcony just now in the clock tower. Remember when I point out all the servants gathering up here, looking down over this room? This room leading to the room with the king in red? It's been more than 40 years, Lucas. You punished yourself long enough. You almost died when you fell. Then it's been like you stayed alive just to make sure you suffered. You were hospitalized, and you're dead, you went to prison, but it still wasn't enough. You've suffered and missed us every day. We aren't here to forgive you, Lucas. You will never have that. We are gone and we cannot say the words. You cannot ever know if we would say the words. But as much as you've hated yourself, you've always known one thing. In your heart of hearts, you know that I would not have wanted you to suffer forever. One day, enough would be enough. If you are ready, you don't have to forget. You only have to forgive yourself just enough to live. His very appearance is painful for me to look at. Just, just as my appearance is painful for you. He's the king of this mansion. He is perhaps the purest glimpse into your soul. Frail, ragged, alone, but beyond powerful enough rage and pain and grief to destroy and rebuild this mansion a hundred thousand times over. Trapped down here, watching his friends murdered over and over and over through these mirrors. He is king of this mansion, but a puppet king. It's time to release him from his torment. So, not preaching forgiveness for all of this murder. She said it. They aren't alive to forgive him. And he will never hear the words, even if they would have forgiven him. This isn't about him being absolved of guilt. This is about him forgiving himself just enough to go on and stop torturing himself. We're presented with two options. We can let the party continue on again as it has for 40 years. Or we can stop this loop right now. Up until now, We've been able to stop one thing at a time, but just long enough to get a mask, get access to new parts of the mansion. But whenever we restart the time loop, we're still sentencing the guests to death. We can't save all of them at once, or at least we couldn't. Until now.
I love how they reuse that chime that you hear at the start of every day. Is the note that you end on. The actual musical note that you end on. So that storytelling, I did not respect it enough until the end of my first playthrough. And all of these realizations hit you at once, and it's just like... Oh, this all has much more meaning to it than I could have imagined at first. This was actually telling a really, really powerful story. Um, and, and so it's not only this incredibly inventive and clever puzzle game, this insanely well-coordinated one, it's a beautiful stroke of storytelling to boot, and that says nothing of the, the sheer style of this. Oh, the style and the swagger of this game. The Sexy Brutal is a real hidden gem from last year. Uh, so I'm going to let this song finish out and not continue to interrupt it. Oh, it's one of the best. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to hit the bell. Uh, hit the thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Whatever else you can do, like, hit the links in the description. And stay tuned for the next LP. We have some good stuff coming up. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.